Hello. Hello all. Uh, as per usual, I've jumped ahead of myself and not filmed it. <sighs> Having trouble finding a Z750 seat base that's crappy enough to not care about chopping the hell out of it. Um, yeah, I haven't finished my search, but uh, I've decided I'm going to make my own. I've just stuck a couple of basic bends in. Bend up, or bend here for up the top. Going to go flat, up, and then across, and then a slight bend in the back. Then, I'm going to uh, do the sides. I'm using galvanised steel plate. Very thin, very thin. I don't know, point something mil. Just so I can uh, tack weld once it's all bent into shape and because I'll have to split the sides to get it bent and all that. So, uh, yeah, just basically, uh, oh, these things. You want to get yourself a set of these. They're really handy. Like for an extra pair of hands, they're really handy. That's why I like them. It's like having an extra pair of hands. Yeah, basically just simply bending it. <coughs> I'm glad it's so thin because it is easy to bend. Whop, whop, whop. Ugh, that didn't bend properly. All right. Clunk. Okay, you kind of get the idea. I'm going to put a bend in here for the tank. So, yeah, but this is only rough. This is kind of a first attempt. Don't know of how many, but we'll, we'll see. This bend, I'm going to use my tube because I want a gradual bend. Now I'm pretty much winging this whole thing, so no sense stopping now. Line it up by sight. so far. I'll uh, basically trace out a line from the underneath, sitting it on top, and then I'll bend it over from there. Uh, there are some other things I have to take into consideration. I've got to put bolt a couple of hinges on here, bolt a lock on here, and a couple of rubber pads and so on just so it holds it firm. But I might even replate the actual uh, main base itself. Um, just for a bit of bracing. Cool. Uh, now what I'm doing is, I've got the basic shape as you saw before. It's a couple of hours since uh, the light was up. Um, yeah, what I've been doing is, uh, I drew my line where I wanted it, and then I cut um, maybe about five or 10 mil outside that line. Um, now, so I had my basic shape, now I did little snips along the way with the tin snips, tin snips, yeah, and uh, peeled it on the inside. Make sure you do peel it on the, uh, fold it on the inside, uh, the the foam side, um, because the other side will obviously want a smooth edge on the other side. What I am going to do is get other bits of tin, bend them to the shape that I do want on the out, on on the downside, and then hopefully somehow. Um, attach them. Uh, I might rivet them or a skin of fiberglass or uh, something like that just to either stiffen it, um, which I may actually use steel, another layer of steel, 
um, or fiberglass, uh, or even a spine of steel and fiberglass that steel in. Um, yeah, just to make it stiffer, because obviously it is floppy wobbly. I was thinking of using this as a uh, template, um, you know, a, a version one, um, but I, I might continue with it. It's uh, it's coming along. You might want to uh, watch when you do do this, because uh, the width on either side I probably could have brought in a little bit. When Alan will be trimming it, they the trimmers do prefer to put a an edge around the edge, you know, some sort of rubber strip or whatever they're going to use, just so when they do fold the uh, the vinyl over, it doesn't tear on the uh, on the material that you made it out of. So yeah, when you have it on, obviously there's the space of this that that'll take up, and then the vinyl, if not foam, over the top of that. So. Yeah, watch the width. A little bit in, you can always build that foam out. But if it's too far out, it's it's going to be bulky by the time it gets on there. So hopefully that won't look too bad. Um, about to, I was about to start working on this uh, this section, but I might leave the front. Work on this side. Do the same as what I've done here, but on this side, um, all the way up to the top. And then that'll give me a, uh, a, 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 a stiffer edge to work on this on both sides. So yeah, hesitate doing the front before uh, you stiffen up both sides. Do it in sections, you know. I started there, here, here, and then I'll do there. So four sections. Three stages, four sections, whatever. Um, what else? What else, what else? I may actually have the... Uh, hinges exposed a little just to help with the trimming just run that line along there straight across and then above this hinge keep that uh, frame exposed perhaps which means I'll have to pound and make that a little neater but whatever uh, yeah so next let's start on this side now what I did with the other side I did guess using the tip of the bottom resting on the edge roughly about where I wanted it or feeling with my finger anyway and then I just went the snip so whether you want to go gung-ho like I did I don't know right now um, I have roughly measured the same line as the other side um, tin snipped it all the way down didn't show you that bit it was boring um, now what I'm doing now is getting the rough bend I've been bending it bit by bit I don't want to do it too quick too soon just so I can match up the other side basically I'm not sure about this one because it's got a helmet lock underneath it this one will be fine but this one I'm not sure All right. Next is the hammer. Try and hold it stable and support it from the other side because the shock's going straight through. Don't do it all the way. Just do it little by little by little. So good, little by little, don't have to do it too much too soon. What I am going to do though is probably fiberglass it up, I definitely will. Um, just to, uh, yeah, give it a smooth off, because Alan does like them smooth, doesn't like jagged edges, he can't glue to jagged edges. Where's my kit? Lock works fine too. Hang on. Voila. Cool. Excellent. Let's 
coming along, little by little. I'm definitely going to have to brace it somehow. With the skin, probably on the inside here, cover it up. That way it's all smooth on the bottom. Galvanise, I just hope I can paint it. <laughs> I'm going to work on the top bit here and keep on going, so yeah. You'll probably next see it when it's done. Rocketing along with this uh, seat base, I've uh, jumped ahead. I've made another skin. Oops, I've made another skin um, and pop riveted that on the inside, so it gives it some stiffness. Um, I've bolted the uh, brackets on. It now locks nicely. It's still got to have some shape, but the, uh, the foam when and when it's sitting is going to. Uh, and the trim, I've still yet to trim it. Anyway, um, wanted to share a tip with you. When you've got to do, I'm putting these here like that, so when it closes, it'll be muffled or you know, cushioned um, when I sit on it. Um, now, when you want to, when you're trying to figure out how to put it, as you can see, I've got two dots here, get yourself a permanent marker, paint the ends of the, of the end as quick as you can to keep it wet. Maybe go over the other one. I actually filled up my texture with uh, methylated spirits because uh, it was running out and I'm a tight ass. <laughs> anyway, put it roughly where you want it. And then close it down on it. Push it in. And cross the fingers. Little, cross the... Oh no. Cross the fingers. It's in the right spot. There you go. So now I know where to drill holes so I can push these through. Cool. Just wanted to share a tip with you. I've still yet to trim up the back a little bit, bring it down a little bit. Um, yeah, line it up. I want it to be uh, fairly flush with the uh, the paint, uh, the fairing line. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. Still yet to trim it up along here. So I'm probably going to put some sticky tape on the inside or some gaffer tape and then fiberglass the outside. Uh, it'll give it some stiffness, some rigidity, and um, it'll finish off that edge for me. So yeah, just wanted to share a uh, little tip, cap, cap, get you up to date. Groovy, catch you guys later. Bye.